and I was partnered with the Center for Development, Orientation, and Training. And uh, my project site was in uh, the Bihar Street District of Bihar. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was called the Established Farmers Collectors Project, and it was based on uh, initiating organic farming practices and creating farmers clubs so that we could empower a lot of farmers in the community. Uh, before I before I go on. <laughs> no, I'm getting there. So I'll just take you back real quick to the application process when I was signed with IndyCore and to ask my family and said, uh, listen, what do you think about me going to the art? And uh, my uncle said, no, you won't. <laughs> and uh, my grandmother uh, had a panic attack. So uh, naturally, I went to be art for my project. I thought it would be a great opportunity to go see a landscape that really is a question mark for a lot of Indians. I really do think so, both in America and in India. Yeah. And I think uh, because of that, there was a curiosity behind that. And there was a curiosity to not only see Bihar, but actually go ahead and live the lives and really see from a different perspective the lives of farmers. Uh, I, wanted to, I was reading about farmers, I was reading about how they struggled, but I wanted to go and now live the lives of farmers and really see it from a different perspective. So that led me to go to Bihar and start the project. Please, and uh, you can even skip this one. <laughs> so, when I first came in the community, I wanted to start off by earning the community trust. And as you've heard several times from all of our fellows, community immersion is a big part of the Indicor process. And after one year of being at the, at the project site, I would best define it as embracing service holistically. Again, it's more than reading about farmer struggles, it's about living them. That, to me, is community immersion. The second thing is look, listen, and learn. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this is when I started the project, my goal was to find as many farmers as possible, meet them, and really hear about their struggles, empathize with them, and more so understand it from a very technical aspect, understand it from what their stress is going through, what are their lives at this point, and how, why do they feel neglected? Again, this is something that you can only really feel once you really start interacting with them. And in terms of pursuit of the best self, what I really mean by that is I told the community right away by, upon entering that judge me by my effort. Okay, you don't have to go ahead and believe what I'm going to say, but you can see how many times I'll come into your community, how many times I'll really come there to serve you, and you can go ahead and make your assessment about my character from there. Next slide. Thank you. So, as the months were progressing, about two months in, I was gaining momentum with the project, and we held the farmers event. And the reason we were doing so is because there was two general consensus within the community with farmers. One was that uh, using uh, pesticides and chemical fertilizers was eroding soil health. And the other was that it was raising input costs. So there was both an environmental and an economic uh, argument to be made as to why we should switch their agricultural practices. Now I wanted to take that agreement and let's turn it into action. So I had an event in which you could talk about how can we create farmers clubs, which are essentially collective movements to really uh, lead community initiatives together, and how can we start organic farming practices, which simply means using environmentally friendly practices and using natural practices that actually serve to enrich the soil in the long run and not actually ruin it, which uh, pesticides and chemical fertilizers do. Next time. So meet Amardeep Singh. Uh, this is one of my best friends in the village, and uh, he's actually one of the leaders in his village as well. And leadership empowerment actually became a big part of the project, which I wasn't expecting. And one of the things we, me and Amarjeet did countless times, we had night meetings, I spent the night in his village, and we meet together and we strategize ways in which we can encourage farmers to take independent action. It was one thing for me to come in the village and start a meeting, but could we motivate farmers to go ahead and start meetings themselves? Really take action and accountability over their own welfare, and really start uh, not only grasping, I think, organic farming, but really seeing it as a feasible practice that could impact their lives. I think the knowledge was there many times in the community, but the willingness to act was missing. And with leaders like Amarjeet, we oftentimes strategize ways we can motivate other people to actually start acting. So, I want to, I'm showing you this slide because it's going to give, it, March was a very difficult time for me in the project. It was about uh, seven or eight months in, and we gained some momentum with the project, but I was having a lot of difficulty with participation rates. A lot of difficulty with getting farmers to come to events. They were telling me that they're struggling, but they're not coming to events, they're not coming to meetings, they're not motivated to actually change their life. And it really wore me out. But one of the things I really learned is to separate my own ego from the act of service. And what I really mean by that is I was getting worn out because people weren't coming to meetings. I was getting worn out because people weren't showing the same level of motivation that I had. But what I really realized was me getting worn out for those reasons is really me taking this as a personal failure. But that's not what it is. 
Service is about serving the community. Service is about not giving up on these people. And just because it was a difficult process doesn't mean I have to get worn out. In fact, it should just motivate me to find more creative ways to impact and reach out to other people. Next slide. And that's exactly what I did, or I tried to do. Is uh, on the left you'll see Mukiji. Now Mukiji again was a really prolific leader in his village who started Burmese composting. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, Burmese composting is a practice in which you create uh, compost pits in which you put manure and you mix a lot of organic ingredients in it, and it makes for a very nutrition-rich uh, type of manure. And he had to give a practical demonstration of this to other farmers from three different villages. And I could tell by the way it was very striking for farmers because they were getting a practical application of what organic farming is. It was no longer something they were hearing about, no longer something they were maybe even reading about or just hearing other people doing, but they were seeing it. And it was, it was, it was really effective in synthesizing the knowledge about that. The other thing I did is I made a lot of community posters. And the main reason I did this was to highlight that people in the community had the knowledge, it's time to act on it. The content from these posters that I wrote um, and created was given directly by farmers. And I think that it was supposed to highlight that the knowledge is there. Now let's take a collective action and act on this. Next slide, please. So just to show you some capturing some social impact about what happened in the community, uh, if you can go to the next slide, I'll just show you one of these points, and if you'd like for me to elaborate, we can go about that in the 30-minute session after. If you look at the first one, knowledge about what organic farming is and how it can be practically applied. 83% of the farmers that I surveyed said it sharply increased. And what that really I'm trying to show you with this is that the main significance of my time in the community was laying a foundation and increasing as much awareness as possible. I did make a farmer's club, but I think the greater impact that I had was really creating a sense of awareness that yes, we can act on this and we can do this collectively. And in fact, that organic farming can benefit the welfare of our lives in the long run. Go to the next slide. To close it out, again, like I said, I created a foundation for uh, my NGO and the next IndyCorp fellow who will become the project site to do the same project to uh, transition to. I created a foundation, I, 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 I inspired farmers to see organic farming as something that's feasible. And what I just want to leave you with is a quote by Anadab Kumar, a farmer in the community, saying, whether the village joins me or not, I will become fully organic because I know it's the only way. And that's the kind of a conviction that really always kept me going and made me believe that this is something that the community can do. Thank you.